Yep, this menu looks pretty familiar to me. Ooh, do I actually have a franchise to continue? Because I feel like it doesn't give you the option if you don't. I'm curious to see what's going on here, especially considering I just had to reinstall the game. Oh. Doesn't look like a whole lot. I have a brand new franchise here with the Arizona Coyotes, and I haven't done anything on it by the, the looks of it. I think I'm just gonna go with Classic here, but was this the first game to have the expansion draft? It might have been. The inaugural season of the Golden Knights was 2017-18, so I'm thinking that this probably was the first game to have that. I guess flashing lights warning here, because we are gonna be randomizing a team. I could have done this in play now, but I am not going to do that because I'm already here, so I will stop right about now we get columbus where is their logo is it ever going to show up there we have it the golden knights are in the game because this game would have came out in 2017 their inaugural season was that year i'm trying to just remember how it all went down so maybe nhl 17 does have an expansion draft option because the golden knights were already sort of announced to be i don't know i actually don't know i can't remember but when we did NHL 17, I don't recall seeing it. So I'm going to say that this was the first game to have it. Columbus is rated 92 overall in this game. That is wild. Not that it matters though, because we're doing a fantasy draft. Yes, that is correct. We're going to be drafting players in such a way that retired players have to be playing with active players. So defensively, obviously it's got to be a one-to-one, -one, but on offense, there just has to be at least one retired player and at least one active player on the line. And then obviously we're going to have two of one or the other, but yeah, you get what I'm trying to say here, I think. Are you, you picking up what I'm putting down? Hopefully. How about we stop thinking about it, jabroni? You're not editing my lines. Let's say we get pick number 11. I'm also curious to see how many retired players are in this game. I don't even know if this going to be possible. I'm just assuming it is because in NHL 17, I was even shocked at how many players had retired. So I think we're going to be set, but we get pick number 18. So let's get it started here. Bobrovsky went at number 16. We got Goudreau at 17 and now it is our turn to make a pick. So we got Ben. Oh no, I don't see a lot of retired players here, guys. Sebastian Ajo, 85 overall. Yeah, this might actually be much trickier than I thought. You know what? I'm going to start off with a goalie here. Let's go with Andre Vasilevsky, which I'm mm, trying to think how we should do that. Should our backup goalie then have to be a retired goalie? I think that's the way we should do it. Let's go with Getzlav as our first line center because he just recently retired. So that is going to be a good player for the first line. And then we could pick up some players that are active like Jonathan Huberdeau, 86 overall. 5.9 million he will be our first line left winger you know what i'm gonna reunite cory perry and getzlav he will be our right winger for the first line that's a lot of salary going on there but we'll make it work hopefully maybe i'm not really sure what to do with eric stall because his last season i think he played a few games with the ahl and that's about it but i don't know if he's willing and ready to retire yet i'll go ahead and take brody for now he's still active so he could be our first defenseman that we draft and it works out quite perfectly that Brent Seabrook is retired. He is a right-handed defenseman, so he will be playing with Brody. I'm actually quite scared at the fact that we're down to $37 million of cap already. Sven Berchi, I remember that guy, but I might actually take threes here because he is 82 overall, making 1 million. He's obviously still active. Right-handed defenseman, let's go ahead. I will do my best not to draft too many right-handed defensemen this time because I must say I have been quite good at doing that in the past. For now, I'm gonna go with Chris Kreider, second liner. 83 overall. Thomas Vanek shoots right, although he's listed as a left winger, so I could play him on that second line as well. Yeah, I think that will work out. All right, so let's go ahead and make that selection. Jay Bomeister, what a legend, left-handed defenseman. That's our top. Four. No way Sedin's in the game. They actually both are. I feel like it'd be so disrespectful to take one and not the other though, so I'm gonna have to pass. Ryan Spooner, he might not be retired. He's still playing, but he is not playing in the NHL. It doesn't really matter anyway though, because I already have Vanek and Kreider, so an active and a retired player, so ultimately it doesn't make a difference, but... That will be our second line center, 81 overall, not the best overall in the world, but we'll make it work. As I mentioned, we have to take a goalie that is retired, so I will take Andre Pavlik. So at this point in time, we have 20 million left in cap space. We have to draft our bottom defensive pair and our bottom six forwards. I still remember getting this guy's nickname wrong and not being left alone about it. I believe I called him... Mr. Playoffs, although his name was Mr. Game 7. I could be butchering it now even, I have no idea, but because of that, Welcome to the team. I'm also going to take Mike Camilleri because he's on a $1 million deal. And then I just have to find a centerman who is active to play with them. 76 overall, not great, but I'm going to take Cobb regardless. Hartnell down, hard to say no to that. Welcome 
a board. Yager, no way. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and take him for our fourth line. I know I'm going down pretty far in overall, but I'm going to take Roslevic because, you know, low top six, he could maybe, he won't grow. It's not going to happen, but I'm going to select him regardless. And then there were two. We just need two defensemen and our draft is completed. Cronwall is a fantastic way to start off that bottom pair. And then we still have a ton of cap in order to get a right-handed defenseman. Yes, I actually do need a right-handed defenseman this time. And they need to be active. Radko Gudis, what a legend. Right-handed defenseman. That will end our draft. I'm curious to see how fast or how slow, I should say, the simulation will be in NHL 18. If I remember correctly, pretty much everything on the Xbox One was painfully slow. There is an overview of the draft. Let's go ahead, advance, and... Oh, wait, what? Can you do this normally? And I just don't know about it. They got Doughty, Panarin, Freddie Anderson. It's kind of funny that they drafted Freddie Anderson, because I'm pretty sure that the Ducks are the team that Freddie refused to play for and then ended up getting redrafted. Here's our lineup. We're a little weak down the middle. It started starts off hot and then we drop real quick. However, these are the exact lines that I had drafted. So we got Hirudo, Getzlav, and Perry playing together. Then Vanek with Spooner, Kreider, Camilleri, Kopp, and Williams. The legend, Roslevic, and Hartnell. Defensively, we have Brody playing with Seabrook, Miller, and Bomeister, Cronwall, and Gudis. And in the cage, we got Vazzy backed up by Andre. So let's go ahead, start the simulation. I'm going to say that Getzlav gets the most points with 75. And I don't know what to expect in terms of making the playoffs. I probably did do fantasy drafts on NHL 18. However, I remember literally nothing about them. But I'll take a random shot in the dark and say that we get 46 wins and we are into the playoffs. All right, moment of truth. And it seems like the simulation is much faster than I remembered it being. Maybe it wasn't the Xbox One that was so bad. Maybe it was only the 360 that was terrible because I know that was bad. But this seems to be pretty solid so far. And I know we did an NHL 17 video. Did that one take a while as well? Was this one of the first games that they really optimized? The draft class is likely to be a little bit weaker than normal. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here, game. Or should I say amateur scout? We ain't drafting. Cleveland Monsters? struggling. Columbus though, we're doing phenomenal. Yeah, I gotta say, I am impressed with the simulation speed. This is not what I expected whatsoever, and I am pleasantly surprised. I am seeing a lot of high scoring games though, so I think my points prediction might be off. We might end up getting a lot more than I expected. 26, 15, and 8. We are definitely looking to be playoff bound. Wow, that's a trade and a half. Technically, we could do it, because Perron is still active. He's only got 60 face-offs, which is a rough go, but I mean, Rozovic, he has 7 74. He's 76 overall. We're upgrading to an 84 overall. Sign me up. Let's go, Florida. What a trade proposal. No way. We drafted Robert Thomas. I didn't see that. Look at this guy. Top nine, medium, 18 years of age, 58 overall. So I'm trying to think of how to do this here. We have Kreider, who's an active player. I was going to move Spooner down, but I can't do that because I need to be playing with Camilleri and Williams, which is a no-go. I'm just going to leave Perron on the third line here. He'll be the third line centerman, 84 overall. I'm sorry. It has to be done. Unless Chris Kreider, he's got 67 face-offs. I could possibly put him here and have Perron playing there, but then we got two right-handed wingers, both of which are listed as left wingers for some reason. I don't know. I guess, you know what? It kind of works. Play on your off wing, and then you set up for one-timers. Camilleri has 80 face-offs. All right. Congrats. You are promoted to center. We have Kreider on the wing now, so he'll be playing with Camilleri and Williams, and we have Vanek playing with Spooner and Perron. Kopp and Perron, two players recently acquired by the Detroit Red Wings. Just one last look. Okay, we are good. We have an active player. We have an active player. We have an active player. Yes, we're all set there. Defense did not change. Let's continue. A devastating 8-4 loss to the Pity Pens heading into the trade deadline. I don't plan on making any moves, so I'm just going to sim past it. I don't think there's any sort of trade deadline mini game in NHL 18. Could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Yeah, it just zipped right past it. Did I say 45 or 46 wins? Because we might actually be landing right about in that ballpark. Glad to see the post-trade deadline collapse. Still a thing, even in NHL 18. It's just existed forever. So never mind. We are not reaching what I thought. Oh! There's another whole week. I think we finished with 44 wins. Are we in the playoffs though? That is the ultimate question. Taking a bit here, it's calculating. Come on. You know you want to. Put us in the playoffs. All right, this is outrageous. Yes! We made it. Wait, hold on. We won the Metro with 45 wins? I was not expecting that. We landed on 100 points, a 61 point percentage. We had 
294 goals for per game, which seems to be quite high compared to the other teams. Goals against per game seems to be quite low compared to these other teams. In the entire league, we finished sixth with the same amount of points as the fifth place St. Louis Blues, but the Colorado Avalanche would go on to win the President's Trophy. It was, in fact, the top 16 teams that made it in. The first line went sicko mode. We got 88 points from Perry, 85 from Hirado, and 80 from Getzlav. Brody put up 73, and then we got 52 from Perron, 46 from Williams, Booner put up 43, Camilleri 41. Vazzy went 32, 19, and 6 with 6 shutouts and a 925, 230 GAA. Pavlik had a 907, 271, and a record of 13, 8, and 4 with a single shutout. I once again feel like I'm struggling to talk here, but anyway, Roberto Luongo was in net for Colorado. He had a 927. Malkin put up 94 points, and they got Eberly and Schwartz with 74 apiece. Radulov had 73. Trocek with 68. Zetterberg put up 48. Yeah, I don't know if it comes across in the video with all the cuts and whatever, but I genuinely feel like I just can't speak. It's established at this point. It's not even a theory anymore. It's just decided. Malkin gets the Art Ross. Sagan was right there. He had 92. We got 91 from Kane. 90 from Ovi, who probably won the Rocket Richard with 57 tucks. He looks pretty young there, actually. Kopitar had 89. Perry with 88. And same with Tarasenko. So we're up there. We did have a player who was up there. Brody led all defensemen with 73. So that's hype. EK65 put up 70. Barry had 63. And then we got a trio of 62 right here. Bishop had the most Ws in the league. He played 68 games. 43. 3, 18, and 5 with 7 shutouts and a 923 save percentage. I see a 930 right there from Matt Murray. Capitals legend, Henrik Lundqvist. How will we do in the playoffs? Not off to a great start here. Really not off to... Okay, let's... Yeah, let's do it. Just get swept in the first round. You might as well. Some things just never change, do they? It will be the Coyotes taking home a Stanley Cup. How does that happen? How does fourth line Hartnell Down get the most points on our team in the playoffs? Oh, scratch that. 77 overall Andrew Kopp also had 3 points. And then Yager had too. What is up, guys? The Coyotes had Sidney the Kidney. They also had Sergachev, Jeff Skinner, Cam Atkinson, Bo Horvat, Tomas Tata, Chris Kunitz, Faxa, Nemesnikov. Okay, they have a pretty good team here. Matt Pumple, I remember that guy. In net, they had Corey Crawford, who put up a 939 in the playoffs. That is simply outrageous. Sergachev led defensemen in the playoffs by quite the margin here. However, it would be Patcher Reddy who led the playoffs in terms of points. He got 25 for the Flyers. I bet 18 of those were in round one. I don't really remember this award screen but anyway let's go through it player awards Malkin gets the Art Ross and the Hart the Norris goes to Carlson Tarasenko gets the Lady Bang Besser gets the Calder that's interesting Corey Crawford actually gets the Con Smythe the Vesna goes to Jimmy Howard so does the Jennings the Masterton goes to Doomlin Selkie will be headed to Giroux's closet Ted Lindsay will be headed to Malkin's closet and the Rocket Richard is going to be Ovi's. Here's the playoff tree. The Flyers did end up making it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, but the Coyotes made light work of pretty much every team. They didn't go to a best of seven once. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I appreciate you and thank you for watching. Yeah, we are continuing the countdown till NHL 23. I can't wait. And on that note, I will be seeing you soon.